Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you happen to be. My name is Nick Barbin, and I'm the president of Optimum Design Associates. And I'd like to welcome you to this presentation of implementing Lean NPI. So for those of you who do not know anything about Optimum, here's a quick overview of our services. Optimum is a full turnkey EMS company with a focus on four core business units, circuit design, virtual library administration services, world-class and award-winning design layout, and high-quality mid-volume PCB assembly production. Today, I'm here to share with you the process, or what I like to call journey, of how Optimum is implementing Lean MPI. The Lean MPI process model was a collaborative effort between Mentor Graphics and Optimum, which was born out of the realization that we have the tools to improve how we transfer and verify our manufacturing data files. Here's how we define the Lean MPI process model. First, use an intelligent manufacturing data source such as ODB++ to quickly import into CAM and DFM tools. At Optimum, we utilize the Valor MPI and MSS tools from Mentor Graphics. Secondly, run DFM checks at the various layout milestones. For example, placement approval, critical route, full copper connectivity, and at final approval. Finally, feed in specific vendor rule sets to run these DFM checks, and voila, you have what we call Lean MPI. As an ISO company, we took this on as a CPI, a Continuous Process Improvement Initiative. So as with any CPI, the underlying goals are to improve yield and reliability in the most efficient manner. So members of our manufacturing, layout, and quality team all came together to set the goals we wanted to achieve. First, streamline our process of, of preparing and delivering intelligent manufacturing data files. As our standard manufacturing deliverable, we are creating 30 plus files, and by delivering just one intelligent ODB++ file, we could significantly reduce our deliverable output time, as well as reduce time down the manufacturing chain. Second, find DFM issues in layout as close to real time as possible. In performing concurrent DFMs throughout the design layout process, we could identify potential issues and correct them sooner than later. We call this less shift. Third, fine tune our DFM rules, or in Valor speak, ERF files, to match as closely to ours and our vendors' capabilities. If you're not consistently modifying your rules to match specific manufacturing capabilities, then you're not truly getting an accurate picture. And finally, come up with a set of metrics to track and measure our continuous quality improvement. The goal here is not so much to see numbers trending down, but to create awareness for our designers and customers of all the potential issues that could affect the yield and reliability of the, board, of the boards that we design and build. So as I said in the beginning, this is a journey of implementing of what we call the Lean NPI model. Here is our process when we started this about a year ago. The first step at the beginning of the layout, our designer submits the BOM to our DFM team to ensure that we have all the one-to-one -one VPL models. Then once we have component approval, placement approval, we then run a Valor DFA design for assembly check. Once the layout is complete, We'll submit the database and output to our customer for their approval. Only after we have their approval do we run a full DFM check, which is comprised of DFF, Design for Fabrication, and DFA. Once we have a clean check, we'll package up the deliverables and release them to manufacturing. Later in this presentation, I will show you where we are now and where we are heading. ODB++ is the brains of the operation and the key element in achieving Lean MPI. Without it, we simply could not perform DFA checks in a timely manner. We're talking days versus a very short number of hours. Here's our traditional set made up of familiar files, Gerber, NC drill, netlist, fabrication drawing, assembly drawing, component, XY file, test point. None of these files are tied together intelligently in any way. The intelligent ODB++ file replaces all of these. So in order to replace our traditional data set of what I like to call dumb data, I first needed to have 100% confidence in the ODB++ as a data set. 
To accomplish this, for approximately six months, we added a step in our process to compare Gerber and ODB++ to ensure they matched. We did this using the Gerber Compare feature within Valor MPI. We had no mismatches over the course of approximately 100 design deliverables. So now that we had the confidence in the data, it was important to help my designers have a better understanding of ODB++. So what is this ODP, ODB++ file anyway? Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't completely know myself, but the best way I can think to explain it is that it's just another CAD database that is made up of quite a few files that are organized into standard directories and then compressed into one TGZ file. It's everything the manufacturer needs in just one file. So to educate my team on how to properly output and review the ODB++ file, I tasked one of my design managers to put a series of step-by-step -step instructional videos together. Invoking the ODB++ output dialog from the pull-down menu will allow us to configure what data gets exported from our PCB layout database. As you can see from just this one small clip, he did an outstanding job and has been a huge part of the success in training our designers. These videos are also available out on the ODB++ Solutions Alliance website. By now having confidence in a better understanding of ODB++ as an intelligent manufacturing data source, we have found it not only possible, but much easier to achieve our second goal of concurrent DFMs. Just to recap, here was our process of flow prior to implementing concurrent DFMs. So when we left shift DFM into our design process, we now have added two additional fabrication analysis steps. One at the completion of critical nets, and another once we've achieved 100% copper connectivity prior to our customer approval milestone. Why do we do this? Because with the ODB++ and the Valor MPI tool, it is fast and easy. And the sooner we can catch issues, the better we can minimize costs and lessen any impacts on schedules. Here now is the complete lean MPI process flow with concurrent DFM. This brings us to our third goal. With Valor NPI, there are approximately 700 different rules that can be defined. Out of the box, these rules are actually pretty, uh, pretty well set up. But for us here at Optimum, as a contract manufacturer, it is important not only to refine these rules to better match our capabilities, but in the case of fabrication checks, where we use many different vendors, it is best to match as closely as possible to them as well. In order to match our major fab partners better, in some cases, we have been able to obtain the same rules file they use to run their own DFMs. In ValorSpeak, this engineering rules file is known simply as ERF. In the case where we don't know where the board will be fabricated, which is actually fairly common, we have our own standard ERF files that are closely matched to our top vendors. For our own ERF rules that match our assembly operation, we have a team that is made up of members from our quality, manufacturing, and layout departments. They review our ERF files quarterly based on Valor and Assembly Postmortem reports. We see this as a continual ongoing effort to improve yield and reliability, as well as reduce the number of unneeded flag violations during DFM checks. So the proof is in the pudding. What results have we achieved through this CPI? Here are the metrics we've used to measure the benefits of our lean MPI process model. How much time have we saved by using ODB++ as our standard manufacturing data set? Are we doing a good job educating our designers on the main DFM issues that can affect yield and reliability? And have we reduced the number of vendor callbacks that could put a job on hold? ODB++ has saved us and our vendors a significant amount of setup time for DFM checks and manufacturing data prep. Here you can see each step that is required using the traditional data set for both fabrication and assembly data prep. This would normally take four to six hours each time. With ODB++, this time is now cut down to approximately one to two hours. If we now put this time savings in the context of lean NPI, where we are running quick and easy multiple checks throughout the layout process, the time savings is significant, and with left shift concurrent DFM, 
we save much more time by catching issues earlier in the process than with just one check at the end where the impact could be great. So every quarter, my design team meets to discuss a variety of topics. One of the main topics is our report of common DFM issues found by the, by the Valor DFM team during the previous quarter. The common DFM issues we track and measure are footprint errors. These are mismatches between the Valor VPL one-to-one -one model and the land pattern on the board. Component spacing, body-to-body -body clearance violations, solder fillet, having too little or too much solder around the lead of the component, Board handling clearances, are components too close to the edge of the board? Fiducial inspection, typically the lack thereof. Netless shorts and opens. Copper shorting and unconnected nets. Trace width and gap violations. Not meeting the requirements of the board specification. Solder mask improvements, missing insufficient or excessive solder mask, and finally, bomb errors. This can cover a wide range of issues, for example, incorrect quantities, ref des inconsistencies, etc. Here's a report where we contrast the number of common DFM issues found between quarters. The main focus is not so much are we trending up or down. We are really just making the designers aware of all the issues that are caught. Through this report and open discussions with our designers, we can create an awareness of all the issues that can affect yield and reliability. Vendor callbacks is something I don't actually have hard numbers on since we've just implemented this as a metric, but it's actually fairly important because of the delays it may cause in manufacturing. Here are the items that we will be measuring. Missing data. Not that we've ever had a big problem with this because of our design checklist, but we have had issues in the past where we forgot to include a file in our traditional manufacturing file set. With the inclusion of ODB++ in our new file set, we've had no issues with this. We'll continue to track it. Contradictory instructions are when files such as fabrication or assembly drawings don't match up with either the ODB or Gerber. A great example of this might be trace widths on specific layers that don't match the impedance requirements called out on the stack up detail of the fabrication drawing, or when the assembly reference designators on the assembly drawing don't match the silkscreen. There are really a number of issues that can come up with this, and we want to make sure we can improve in this area. DFM issues. This is an area where I hope we don't see any issues because of the number of internal DFM checks we run, but nevertheless, we'll track it. And finally, negotiations. It's typically an instruction on our fab and assembly drawings that the manufacturer can't comply with exactly, so they'll suggest an alternative. A classic example of this is subtle dielectric adjustments needed to the stack up detail to meet impedance requirements. We typically will get our actual numbers from a specific vendor, but when purchasing decides to use another vendor, there, were, there will almost invariably be some issue with the stack up. There are a number of other items for solder mask, drill, fab material, etc. that come up for discussion. At Optimum, we have always prided ourselves on providing an exceptional manufacture, manufacturing data package that won't prompt a phone call from our vendor. So I'm very interested in seeing how these metrics come out. So as I said in the beginning, Optimum is on a journey of implementing the Lean MPI process. We are making great progress, but we have more work to do. So here's where we currently are. We have a great amount of confidence in ODB++ as our preferred all-inclusive manufacturing data package, but we're also still including the traditional Gerber package to those customers that are unsure about it. We are left shifting our DFM process to run additional checks during the layout cycle. We are catching issues sooner than later, and we have started to review our ERF files to improve their effectiveness in reducing possible yield and reliability issues, as well as better match ours and our vendor's capabilities. We do have more to do. Elimination of our Gerber traditional data set will be a big time saver, but in order for this to happen, we really need our customers to accept and mandate its use throughout their manufacturing chain. Although many of our customers have done exactly that, there are still many others that haven't and quite frankly, have no idea what ODB++ is. For them, we will continue to supply both datasets 
and as often as possible talk to them about the benefits of ODB++, especially in the terms of cost and quality. We are currently adding two additional DFM checks when it makes sense. For larger designs, we will run concurrent DFF checks at the completion of critical net and full copper connectivity milestones. Speed is really the driver for this through the use of ODB++ with the benefit of finding potential issues earlier in the process. And we will continue our efforts in improving the process of matching our DFM checks to the capabilities of our vendors as we are able to obtain their rule sets. At Optimum, we pride ourselves on designing and manufacturing products for our customers that are of the highest quality, extremely reliable, and at the lowest cost possible. Implementing the Lean MPI process is helping us achieve this goal. Thank you. And at this point, I would like to open this up for discussion.